Hello viewers. Today, we're gonna talk about how to put on underwear. I have a lot of coworkers that will always stop me and say, Matt, you're so passionate about underwear, you're so knowledgeable on the topic, how do you do it? And I decided it was time to make a video so I could tell the world a better way to put on underwear. Underwear is the oldest piece of clothing known to man. People have been arguing for decades, uh, millennia, maybe, I don't know, that uh, shoes came first. I think anyone with a brain will tell you that underwear came first. It is a leaf. It wasn't until the underwear renaissance that we saw uh, people really taking off with different kinds of underwear. We saw uh, in Europe, there was experimentation with buttons on the front and they were cloth trousers. Uh, when they came to America, you saw uh, some uh, ingenuity with the elastic band, which really was like the sliced bread of underwear, right? There is not a time in my mind before elastic bands on underwear. And anyone who is a true aficionado of underwear will appreciate a good button-up piece. Uh, but for today's young, up upwardly mobile individual, Elastic is probably the way to go. So today, when we go into how to wear your underwear, we're going to make the assumption that you have an elastic band piece of underwear and you're not from, say, like the mid-16th century. If you have mid-16th century garb, you can watch another video that we'll put out later on how to wear Renaissance underwear. When we talk about the underwear, I can't stress enough the importance that underwear is, uh, and not a lot of people know this, uh, optional. You don't have to wear underwear. There actually is no, nowhere in the Constitution where it says you have to wear underwear. I highly recommend that you do, having said that. Um, I mean, think about different scenarios when you wouldn't have underwear on, and that'd be a really bad thing. So imagine you're walking outside, you have denim on, and it's raining, right? So there's case number one. This is really not something you should take lightly. It's something that you should be very serious about. It's why I'm so passionate about underwear and why I want you guys to have all of the background and depth of knowledge that I have about underwear. Uh, the name underwear comes from uh, the Latin word underio wear, and uh, that loosely translates to things you wear under something. So uh, that's why it's called underwear. Underwear? <laughs> that's up to you, right? Now let's talk about the different types of underwear. The way I like to think about it is that you've got basically the four royal families of underwear. You've got briefs, boxers, boxer briefs, and thongs. Let's start with briefs. Briefs are your primary classic type of underwear. As we've got the band up at the top, this is a very, very high quality band. This is, wow. Wow. So we have here a brief. It's got the high cut for the legs. Got enough coverage for the front and the back business. So this is what you would classify as a brief. You're covered, but not overly covered. It's a good, standard, classic look and a classic feel. This is my Dan underwear. If I wanna be Dan today, I'm wearing briefs. Next up, let's talk about boxers. So boxers, when you talk about the personality and the soul of a pair of underwear, is these are like the surfer bro, your cousin who's just like a beach bum in South Carolina, kicking back, catching some waves. So these are what I would like to call Brock. These are my Brock underwear. So what I like to look for is a good fabric cover on my boxers. So some have the exposed elastic. Those tend to cut, especially if you cupcake a lot like I do, you'll get some cutting on the bottom of your handles. So what I like to do is make sure they've got some fabric on there. And you'll see right here, we've got the accordion pull. There's a little extra fabric right there. You see that? Oh, that's a nice pull. That is a very nice pull right there. Oh, wow. And you see that it has the, enough fabric that it stretches up, it gives you a range. So these are very forgiving underwear because it'll tell you, hey, if you skip your diet this week, we're okay. We're just gonna pull a little bit. There's no pressure on these ones. So you don't feel like you're judged as much by your underwear. That's why I like Brock. And then up at the front, you've got an opening. Some do and some don't have an opening here. But if you find some with an opening, make sure they've got a classy button. The Opening at the front is gonna allow you to handle your business if you need to, but the button says, I don't need to handle business right now. I'm all business right now, okay? Very versatile piece here. I personally endorse wearing boxers as much as possible. So, we have our boxers taken care of. Let's move on to family three. Family three is our boxer brief. Now you might say to yourself, why is it called a boxer brief? I'll tell you, weirdly enough, 
These bad boys are a combination of boxers and briefs, at least in the way they are cut. So you'll notice they have, oh wow, wow, this is high quality fabric on these. I normally don't advocate for boxer briefs, but if you find any with this high quality of fabric and feel, definitely go for it. Uh, but what you'll see is you'll have a similar fabric and a similar design to your traditional brief. So you can see these look fairly similar, not just in color, but in the way that they feel, the way they stretch, the way that they mold, and the way that they're tight to your body. What you'll also notice is that these have a little bit more length on them. These go down your leg for a tight fit. A lot of times people wear these for, say, workouts. So I like to call these Steve's. I see Steve at the gym a lot. Steve wears boxer briefs. So when I feel like I'm going to the gym, when I want to stay in shape, I still avoid boxer briefs because I think you should make up your mind and underwear should do the same. You can obviously make your own choices, but this is just coming from a professional. So do what you want. The final family I'd like to talk about is the thong family. So in the thong family, you'll find that you can have G strings, the G is for groin, uh, C strings, uh, Z strings, uh, pretty much any of the strings, you'll be able to find these in the thong family. And you'll notice we have one pair right here. Um, very small cut, right? Very, not a ton of coverage here, especially in the rear. These are more of your like low show, no show types. So if you're maybe rocking an awesome pencil skirt, maybe you're in those slacks that you know hug your business real nice and you don't necessarily want the intrusion of your underwear on that picture, these are a great option for you. I would recommend not an everyday piece, but choices can be made, like I said. Uh, one caveat, and this spans across pretty much all but that family, uh, is this recent trend of shapewear. So shapewear is a new fad that pretty much, you'll you notice it looks like we've just got a really extended band here. And that's kind of what it is if you break it down. I mean, look at that. That is a tall waistband, but what it does and you can't see this at home, but I want you to imagine, I'm, and don't imagine me shirtless, but imagine that I have these on and I've got it pulled tight and that just tucks right there. That tucks my tummy and it makes it look real good. So these, maybe not as forgiving in feeling as the boxers are forgiving on the eye when you may have skipped a workout or a, a, a diet meal. So, um, that's pretty much the basics on the types of underwear. What I wanna do now is I wanna show you guys kinda of how I pick the underwear for the day that I want to wear. I have what I like to call my look journal. And every morning when I wake up, I go to my look journal and I say, Matt, what mood are you in today? And I say, okay, I'm a little drowsy, but I'm hopeful. So I'm in a hopeful mood, so I'm hopeful, and then I say, what's the weather gonna be like today, Matt? So I pull out my phone, I look at the weather, it's gonna be nice and warm today, good sunny day. So I say, I'm hopeful, it's sunny, it's looking real good. What do I wanna do today? And so when I get into my journal, I start drawing these things out. So I'll start, and normally I would have an array of colored pencils in my dressing nook in the morning when I get ready. Today I only have the pen for display purposes, but you can get the idea. I highly recommend getting either some washable markers or uh, colored pencils like I have. A 24 color set will work, but the bigger the better, the more detail you can put into your drawings and the better you can plan your day. So let's say we have a sun. It's gonna be a sunny day. So I'm gonna put the sun in here, shine and bright. I've got me here ready to wear my underwear. Maybe we're gonna put some birds in here because I think th this is a nature kind of day. There's a cloud, but he's really small and in the distance. Okay, so we've got a small cloud. Then I think, now what do I want to do today? I'm going to work. Great, briefcase in hand. Put the briefcase in there. Okay, so I have my briefcase. I'm ready. This is work mat. He's on his way. Hopeful, sunny day work mat. What else am I going to be wearing today? So then I say, all right, well, today's shirt and sh today's tie, I'm going to wear a white button-up because I don't have my colored pencils. Normally, I wouldn't wear a white button-up, but you get the idea. So I'm going to put my button-up. I'm going to put that in here. And let's see what kind of tie do I want. And I go with a, a Windsor knot. 
that's just the traditional classic knot when I tie my ties. So I draw that one in. If you want to go with a more modern skinny tie knot, that's totally up to you. But I would say that should also play into the type of underwear you want to wear that day. So I'm going to say I'm going to wear a striped tie. Traditional width, not slim. So overall, now I have a picture of what my day is going to look like. Now I can make an informed decision about which type of underwear I want to wear. So I walk over into my underwear display case and I say, hey, mm, white shirt, I'm going to go with classic white on the bottom. So I go and I pull out my classic whites. Now I may have different variations. Obviously I don't have boxer briefs because I don't believe in them, but I have some white boxers. I have some white briefs. I may or may not have white thong family. Who knows? I don't know. Uh, and so I'll go and I'll say, now which of these things goes with what I'm going to do today and what mood I'm in? Well, I'm hopeful. So that still leaves this option open and this option open. However, I'm going to work. Well, maybe that's not a Brock kind of day. Maybe, maybe this is a, a Dan kind of day because Dan is a hardworking guy. So I pick my underwear and I say, OK, let's draw this in here and see how that looks on there. So I now have my underwear picked. And I got the briefs. Wow, that's a good looking pair of underwear and that's a good looking outfit. That's just a taste. You can set up your own morning routine. I highly recommend a look journal for this part of your day, but uh, it's up to you how you execute. Uh, the level of detail I think is crucial, but if you wanna be a little less detailed in your journal, I think for beginners, that's okay. As you get more advanced, you're gonna to wanna to put more detail in there. You're probably gonna to wanna to draw the grass. You're probably gonna maybe put a car in the background if you're by an ice cream shop, a barber shop, anything. If you feel like you're in a classic movie, draw Casablanca in the background. Put a plane going through there. Whatever you need to do to make it feel like your day, own that day and own your underwear, okay? All right, so now that we've decided on what underwear we're going to wear for the day, let's talk about how to put your underwear on. What you'll need, underwear. Now you have your underwear. Let's figure out how to put it on. The first key you have to have is a great place to do it. I have my dressing nook. You may have your kitchen table. Uh, you may be in a public restroom. There's a lot of different ways and places in which you can put underwear on. You have to take into account what you have in your surroundings before you can decide what way you're going to put your underwear on. Am I alone? Do I have a partner? Do I need a spotter? Am I in a very constricted space? Is it wide open? Is it welcoming? My dressing nook, very wide open. I actually took our spare bedroom and just emptied it out so I would have a place to put on my underwear. You may notice I am wearing tights already. This is for demonstration purposes. I cannot stress enough that you should not already have underwear on when you are putting your underwear on. I also have on boat socks. Uh, what I like to call them is my getting ready for the day socks. So I'll put these on, very low profile, low resistance. Uh, if, you if you wanna shave your legs or maybe wax them so you get less resistance on your leg when you're pulling your waistband and the side bands up, I recommend that as well. Get in a comfortable space for you. So we're gonna first go into the classic method, which we call the one leg method. So one leg stands for one leg at a time. Uh, this is a solo method. So I am by myself, I am in a seated position and uh, I have my underwear in my hand. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is square them up. So uh, if you've ever played sports before or lifted weights, they tell you to get your feet square underneath you. This is what you wanna do. Get your feet shoulder width apart. You wanna then square the underwear up the same way. So I like to knock it at my knees, put my thumbs inside the band and say, okay, I'm dead center right now. Make sure that it's equal distribution on both sides. I have a centered pocket in the front. And if you need to check in the back, you've got this little back seam that can give you a good guidepost. So I'll put that right there. I'll pull it taut, and then I will bring up one leg. Typically, your dominant leg is gonna be your second leg. You're gonna bring up your right leg if you're a left-legged jumper, or if that's your dominant leg, if your right leg is your dominant leg, you'll bring your left foot up first. For demonstrations, we're gonna go right leg first. Uh, and so what I'm gonna do is I take the dominant side, the side that's going in first, or the non-dominant side that's going in first, uh, take that thumb, leave it there. I'm gonna pull up to the entry hole there. Okay, so I've got my thumb looped through. You can see that on that right leg hole. I'm gonna hold that. Then I'm gonna take my other hand and drop that and 
use that to pull at the bottom, the other end of the opening. So I have a real wide opening. Can you see me? Can you see me through this? Huh? So what we have here is a good solid base to work from. So now I take that non-dominant leg, I point my toes and step through. That is your first leg. Don't bring it up above the knee. So you'll notice I, I stopped right here. So I step in, I leave it at the knee. You'll see why we do that in a second. Then we're gonna move to the second leg, similar, but now I can't flip it, right? So I have thumb through the waistband in that bottom end of the hole so I can open it up. And then I'm gonna go on the outside and pull this down a little bit so I've got the opening. Then I'm gonna point toes, sleek all the way through, stopping at the knee. And now that it's at the knees, what I can do is I will put my feet beneath me, square it up again. I'll stand and pull up, okay? So if you have a tighter fitting pair like these, what I like to do is you can rotate, you keep your thumbs inside to keep the band loose and moving upwards and you can pull on it. Some people like to do a little dance when they get ready. I think that's great. The getting ready jig is all one of my favorite dances. But really what you wanna do is make sure that it's sitting nice along the waistline here. So you're obviously not going to have shirt and underpants on underneath it, but for demonstration purposes, what we have here is the band is sitting nicely right at waistline, okay? It's not dropped below. We have it pulled up. It's not dropped below, so you can see any exposure of the business and back, okay? So that is method number one. I'll go ahead and dismount these and move on to method number two. So uh, there are two different ways to do a two-legged put-on. So with that last one, one-legged, now we're gonna move to a two-legged put-on method. So, seated position once again, same squaring up, okay? But now what I wanna do is really open this up wide. I'm gonna set this on the ground. Are you confused yet? Make sure you vacuum before you do this. You can see I have two holes where my feet will go. I am now going to dip in my toes one at a time, right there. So you see my toes are in, my heels are not down because otherwise I can't pull up, right? They're kind of stuck on the ground. So I'm gonna leave the toes in. Then I'm going to take my fingers, grab the band at the front, slide to the sides, wedge that back, and I'm gonna pull with both hands like we did on the first one at the knees, but the whole way up, going back and forth motion. And then you're gonna stand and do your little underwear jig, and there we have it. So those are both of the solo methods. Now we're gonna go into a little more advanced method. So I'm gonna need a partner here. So this is for situations when you have a buddy system at play. Uh, if you are in need of assistance uh, in putting your underwear on, this is called uh, the back method. This is a variation of the two-legged. However, this involves a partner. So some people referencing the way that you lay when you have this, uh, will call this the dead bug method. I think that downplays the importance of it and it shames it and I don't like it at all. So now that I have my partner selected, I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna give the underwear to my partner. I then am gonna lay on my back. All right. All right, there we go. So the reason that they called this dead bug, once again, you're, you're, you're gonna be in the air. So they you envision this, right? Ah, I'm helpless, right? I need to put on my underwear, I need some help. So I have both legs in the air, okay? So now my partner is going to put one through the hole, put two through the hole like we did earlier, put them on, slide down, pull, and then I complete the cycle as much as I can when I'm on the ground, reach up and get the assist and get to my feet, okay? Now I'm gonna turn, they're going to adjust in the back to make sure I am able to get all coverage in all areas, okay? So we've got it tucked up. You can help them with the jig a little bit, all right? And I'm gonna sink up in the front. So now, as you can see, I have full coverage. I'm comfortable. I think for the more advanced underwear wearers out there, underwearers as those in the industry call it, uh, you would maybe be more inclined to try the partner method uh, maybe the two-leg method. 
I definitely recommend one leg for those just beginning exploring their underwear prowess. Now that I have my underwear on, how can I make sure that these aren't gonna move, they're not gonna fall off during the middle of the day, they're not gonna rip away from my body at some point like a pair of tearaway pants. So what I like to do is go through a series of, you can come up with calisthenics. Uh, I, I start off with just a hip rock and I say, where are these falling on my hips as I'm going back and forth? Are they moving a lot? If they're moving a lot, this is maybe a good sign that either I don't have the right cut of underwear, I don't have the right size of underwear, or maybe I just don't have a good quality brand of underwear if I know that those things aren't true. Then I'll try side to side. Okay, are these riding on the cuts in the side? Nope, these are good, high quality underwear, not moving. And so then I'll put it on a little road test. And what I'll do for a road test is I will do a full lunge to really get that extension in. So you see, I'm, I'm testing where it's gonna ride up in the back if I decide to do some striding that day. So maybe I'm gonna be out, uh, I need to mount a horse, right? Hop on the back if I'm saddling up for a ride. I need to be sure that this isn't gonna ride in a weird place. So leg extended, full knee up. And then if you wanna throw in a little bit of trickery, sometimes I'll pretend I'm a wide receiver in the NFL, right? Oh, throw me a ball, oh, throw me a ball. You know, come back up, do it with the other leg. Oh, caught that ball, caught it, right? Whatever you are gonna be comfortable doing is the best way for you. I set aside a good 30 to 45 minutes every morning and I wake that up extra early just so I can do those kinds of things to make sure my underwear is gonna fit for my day. And there it is, it's that easy. Now you know how to put on underwear. Of course, none of this will matter until you know which pants you're going to wear your underwear with. You don't wanna be caught up in a situation where you're in a high humidity area, maybe in precipitation with denim and your Brock's on it's just not good. So we'll talk about that, all the different scenarios you might face next time on how to wear your underwear with pants.